Savannah Safar, your tryst with adventure. It is unlike anything you have seen before. Jambo, Jambo Guana. Gauri or Dehej as we know it is an integral part of Indian marriage. It consists of money, cash, gold and whole lot of other goodies. For example, if you recall, uh, some time back the industrialist Mr. Mukesh Ambani's daughter got married and they moved into a 450 crore worth of bungalow. It's a gift for the marriage. And usually there is a prolonged negotiation on this Dehej part before a marriage is formalized. And the tougher the negotiation from the boy's side, the better is the booty. The better is the quantum of the Dehej. No wonder you would always find that the Indian groom is smiling and the bride, her parents, they are repaying the loan over years together. Imagine a situation which is just the opposite of the Indian scenario. That means the marriage is finalized, but it is the bride's father who is doing the negotiation for the dowry. That means it is the groom's father who is paying and he is the one at the receiving end. So there you find the bride is all smiles and the groom is repaying his dowry, his marriage dowry over years. It's most unacceptable in the Indian scenario, but that's exactly what it happens in another part of the world, in Africa, amongst the Maasai tribes. Hi, I am Basak from Savana Safari. That's S-A-V-A-N-A -A Safari. As a wildlife enthusiast, I speak and write on the wonders of Mother Nature. And I specifically undertake customized adventure tours to Kenya and Tanzania. The Maasai tribes are found in Kenya, in Africa. They are a wandering tribe, but they stretch all along from Kenya right up to Tanzania. Now, when a Maasai boy likes a Maasai girl, the boy's father goes to the girl's father. And then, surprisingly, contrary to the Indian scenario, the, the girl's father, he starts a prolonged negotiation as to how much of dowry the future groom's father should give him. It is a very, very, very tough negotiation wherein even the seniors of the village participate because the father of the girl feels that this dowry that he is going to receive will be a great support during his old age. Contrary to the Indian scenario, the dowry is paid in terms of cows, sheep, goat and even blanket. And before, till the time, the final negotiation completes and the groom's party accepts it, no marriage is finalized. It's just like the way it happens in India. Unlike the Indian scenario, however, the groom does get a lifeline from his future father-in-law. If the groom doesn't have enough money to pay his dowry, actually he can make a part payment and marry. That means he marries first, makes a part of the payment and the balance amount he has to pay over the years every time he visits a village. That creates a very, very 
trying situation for the groom because every member of the village every member of his tribe becomes responsible for recovery of the dowry and wherever whenever they come across him they will chase him for payment of the balance amount of the dowry in fact i met one guy in nairobi he was saying that he hasn't visited his parents for 5 years i said why he said sir kya karu main every time i visit they ask for the balance amount of my dowry now i don't have the money if i don't have the money i can't go to the village so it's a very pathetic situation as far as a masai groom is concerned these days young indians study in different parts of the world work in different organizations and more often than not they end up marrying foreign girls girls of other nationalities as a fellow indian i wish them a very happy married life however there is a small warning on my part ghumte ghumte agar aapne kisi masai sundari ka prem mein gir gaye to bach ke rehna zindagi bhar aapko dowry ka emi bharna padega so my advice to you would be dhoondo rani hindustani aur raho zindagi bhar raja hindustani so please like share and subscribe to my channel and join me in this amazing journey where i bring you face to face with the cradle of civilization savana safari your tryst with adventure